Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of RPT. It's your boy Chingo Blingo with the big tamarindo, the ghetto vaquero, el rey de foreplay, the masa messiah, the tamale kingpin, the Versace mariachi, and uh, we have producer DJ Hijo Big Rob. Soup. Good morning, everybody. How are you? Buenos dias. Man, Buenos dias. Uh, the baby wakes up way too early, so uh, y'all bear with me. We're going we gonna to kick in the energy, though. Uh, if, you, if you already came with it. You already, and I, and like I just moved, it. so I'm out of magic mind, and Oof. you know, so sometimes you just be slacking and lacking, sometimes bro. Sometimes you need that mojo. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, magicmind.co forward slash chingo. That is the promo code. Get hooked up. Also, man, shout out to the contra our contractor. You know, shout out to Bobby. Doing the work. Yeah. Uh, let me pull up his phone. This is so unorganized, y'all. But I, I need to shout out, you know. Yeah, it's not unorganized. Um, it, this, this is Chingo coming off the road for two shows, but like four days. Flying, yeah, like two cities. Moving. All kinds of shit. Uh, if you guys need a contractor in the Houston area, get you a free estimate, free quote. Tell them Chingo sent you. Ask for Bobby. It is 832-893-7546. Sass. Oh, What's up, big dog? How you been, plug. big dog? Hey, doing good, man. Happy fa- happy belated Father's Day on the podcast. Likewise, brother. Um, it's good to have you back. You know, a lot of people don't know this, but when you go out of town for shows, and we record a lot of our content in batches for that reason, uh-huh. uh, it, we go like a week without seeing each other. Yeah, and we might, you know, we might. And text. that's way too long, Robert. It really is. It really is too long. It really is too long. But it is nice when I get a text about a Ryobi product. Uh, yeah, that initiates a conversation. So yeah. I can't wait to talk about that. Yeah, because um, you know the. I feel like I need to maintain our backyard. You're gonna stuff. do that? I, I'm thinking about it. I'm just kind of, I just be sitting back there looking at it like, okay, first I'm gonna just get the edge, you know, like La Wida. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I was like, maybe I could just do that for a little bit, cause you know, it's like, should I, should I not? I haven't been in the new crib, so I don't know how big it is. But when I, when you ask me, like, I need something just like a simple push with a bagger, so there's no clippings everywhere. Like, oh, I'm like, cool, bet. There's a ton of options. Unless that. it's gonna spit out the little mulch in a controlled fashion. There, there is. There's an okay. attachment for that too. You could do that as well. But uh, I just thought to myself as I was like, I got some links to send you, and I was like, man, is he gonna? Because it grows so fast, right? So you're gonna find yourself doing this on a minimum of weekly, right? Okay. And then you're gonna edge. Is that how you do it every week? At least, yeah, at nice. least every week, yeah. And okay. then try to water it and stuff. I was doing that actually when you texted me. Oh, okay. But uh, it's it's work, you know. It's you was work. out there cow tipping in the middle of the pasture, dude. People love that <laughs> song. We have to make eventually it's gonna become a real song. Yeah, I already clipped that little part to have it in my phone and I can just kinda hear where the lyrics yeah. could could what what lands better. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Cause cause we did a different line. Sometimes uh on that one episode, Cow Tipping, y'all go check it out. It, it is on Rockfin, R O K F I N forward slash red pilt the That's right. So on some of the lines we were freestyling like um uh Chasing them cowgirls, wearing them Daisy Dukes. That's the main one. I think people really stuck to that one. Oh, Daisy Dukes? Yeah. I or got, should it I be got. like, or should it be like, a cow tipping in the middle, middle of, of the pasture, pasture. And just a local boy chasing mm-hmm. all the cowgirls. Ooh, that could be another verse, right? Yeah, cowgirl, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We'll figure it out. Uh, all members of the Thea, all agents of the Thea, stand back, stand by with your lyrics. <laughs> uh, shout out to Jess Tear on the Discord. She was like, yo, this need, really needs to be a song. Oh, and, funny. Yeah, a lot of people on there in the Discord were like, all the agents of the Thea, like, yo, this shit's catchy, son. Oh, badass. Yeah, I was, was kind of MIA this weekend. It was Don's birthday. It was Father's Day, kids, all that thing, and obviously, you were out of town, so I don't know how often you were in the Discord this weekend. Yeah, I was on it. Nice. Yeah, I was on it, and I uh, started to bother you on Father's Day about Ryobi products. But yeah. Ryobi, if you're listening, you need to be a sponsor. Somebody need a goddamn sponsor the show already. Yeah, we got some we got some things in the pipeline for show sure. as um, we're getting ready to move into this new space. Yeah. So right now, uh, this episode is brought to you by the Legalized Freedom Tour. Yeah. Next stop, Irvine, California, July 6th. Ontario, California, July 7th. El Centro. California, July 9th. I think VIP about to sell out on that one. Uh, Denver, Colorado, a whole weekend. Yes, sir. July 14th through the 16th. Since we're doing a whole weekend in Denver, that means I will be going back to Denver next year. Nice. So uh, don't sleep. Uh, OKC, July 28th. Chicago, Chirac, Chaganistan, August 4th. Phoenix, AZ. What it do? I'll be out there in the 60 True. Know what I'm talking about? August 11th. Then we have San, San Jose Califas, August 24th. Brea. September 14th, Oxnard. September 15th, Austin, Texas. That you know that one is the reschedule on, mm-hmm. on the mm-hmm. renege. You know what I'm talking about? September 28th, uh, San Anto, a whole weekend, which means I will be going back next year. September 29th through October 2nd. Addison, Texas, another weekend. I will be back next year. November 4th through the 6th. Still working on Salt Lake City, Las Vegas, and Houston. That doesn't mean sleep on this year, by the way, guys. No, don't sleep. No, that Never. means that literally means do not sleep. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because we don't know what the future holds. In, look, in in Brandon's America, yeah, 
is it might get to the point where they're squeezing the working class, they're squeezing the blue collar so much from every angle that people might have to start sacrificing their entertainment budget. But see, the good thing about the Legalized Freedom Tour is that it's more than just entertainment. It's camaraderie. It's yeah. community. Uh, it's good for the soul. It's good for the spirit. It's good for the country. I 100%. I, I approve this message. No, I'm talking about? Did you see anything while you were on the road that was kind of like shaking my head like it wasn't like this under trompitas you know or did anybody even say anything that kind of like uh stuck with you well we just did uh albuquerque new mexico shout out to all the people that came out and um great crowd i mean people dude check this out bro there's a portion of the show where i basically say either you were born with a chile or you were born with a taco that's it like you know or i'll say like men and women are different that's just the thing like we're different like i'm not saying women aren't great i'm not saying we're not equal in a lot of ways but we're different you know and people just start you get a whole applause break. <laughs> and I was like, how, I think I said in El Paso, I was like, how crazy is it that we've gotten to the point where just stating simple, basic biology mm -hmm. gets you an applause break? Uh, and, I, and they were just like, oh, is he mad at us for clapping? And I was just like, bro, how do we let it get to this point? And I also want to talk about this J-Lo document, uh, documentary that's on Netflix. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry to point at you so aggressively. <laughs> oh, I like um, it. I like bringing the heat. Bro. It's called Halftime, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Have I you saw, seen it? I saw a trailer, like a teaser for it. I didn't even see a full trailer. I literally saw like a 60, not even, 30 second okay. teaser for it. Well, I never knew J-Lo was borderline Marxist. Woke, right? So y'all got to go check it out for yourselves. You got to weigh and measure it on your own, <laughs> right? But there was literally a scene where they interviewed, uh, I guess they played a clip of Ben Affleck, where he was chiming in on the amount of hate that J-Lo was getting uh, at one point when mm -hmm. everybody was like, oh, she really can't sing. She, yeah. You know what I mean? She just got a big old booty. Right. She just be singing and dancing, whatever. Yeah. And um, like South Park made fun of her. There was a scene where they're like, taco, taco, burrito, taco, whatever. <laughs> and um, anyway, Ben Affleck's like, yeah, she, you know, I told her like, you know, does any of this bother you? And she's just like, you know, I knew it would be unfair for me. I, I was prepared for this. I'm Latina and I'm female. And you don't understand because you're a white male. And you didn't know that, you know, I was prepared for, like, I knew it was. And it's like. What? And then she was talking about preparing for the halftime show and how they, bro, they found a way to tie it back to Trump. Mm. Yes, it was just like clips of Trump and her watching the news. She was like, I have to make a statement. And, you know, normally I, I say, you know what, lead the politics to everyone else. She's like, normally I'm like, you know what, lead the politics to everyone else. I'm not that chick. But I have to say something. Obviously, right? People got triggered, kids in cages. So, she had to fight the NFL production team to like make sure that they allowed these little like lit up Super Bowl halftime cages where they had like her daughter singing out of <clears> one <throat> and like all, they had kids placed in them. And the NFL was like, ah, we don't want to make this a big old political halftime. And um, now uh, Marisol was telling me that J-Lo performed for something in L.A., some Dodger, L something extravaganza, something gala. And that she let her daughter sing, and now her daughter's a they. Hmm. I guess she's the, I don't know what they call that, fluid, non-binary okay. of some sort. And uh, she had like a rainbow microphone. Of course, man, it's Pride Month, bro. It might have been a Pride event, yeah, ESG huh? score, you got to go all of in. Of course. Well, Mighty So didn't explain it all the way, like, is it a Pride event? Mm. But long story short, somehow, some way, according to Mighty Soul, uh, uh, J-Lo's baby is a they and a them. Okay, That's all right. I love that this is how we're going to dissect or get into the first episode of the week here. It's mm. Wednesday. It's the first of uh, many episodes this week. It's the longest one, but I have to ask, did you watch the whole thing? The doc? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is it pretty long or is it just like a regular 90 uh, It's like a regular, yeah. I can't remember if it was like a minute. I mean, a, an hour, hour 15. Uh, going into it, did you know what it was going to be about? Like, did you oh, just We just thought it was like her prepping for the Super Bowl. So you can see rehearsals and like behind the scenes, like vlog style. Yeah. What did you take away from it, I guess? There's so Basically, many questions here. They made it about Trump. They showed footage of the border, and she's just like, you know, uh, uh, footage of, like, trompitas. You know, he's mean to immigrants, and they're treating Latinos bad, and I have to make a statement at the Super Bowl, even though I'm Puerto Rican, and Puerto Rico's part of the U.S., and, but, you know, Latinos are being treated so bad. And, and she said, she literally said, uh, she said, blah, 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 and that's a narrative that Trump created. But she just, you know, forgive her. She don't understand. And me and Marisol, uh, we're just sitting there watching it. And we're just like, pobrecita, she don't, 
she don't know just like i didn't know mm-hmm. but she's older than me so i'm thinking like damn baby you ain't figured out yet yeah like, i'm yeah. 42 she about what 50 maybe yeah 52. but also it's 2022 like we've been through we, we've seen both sides yeah and i don't know when this thing was edited and produced but still yeah it's kind of like man y'all y'all it didn't need all it didn't have to go back to trump and and they're rapists you know they're racist or whatever uh trump said you know they're rapists and yeah they're they're not sending their best they're sending their uh t-h-e-y apostrophe r-e i mean uh, t-h-e-i-r yeah uh i think the same the same thing like the same sentiment was in the ariana grande <laughs> one that came out a couple, probably about a year ago now which it was i thought it was gonna be a doc it was just literally live performances it was like two minutes in between like a set and then like just the song it was just all performance it was all performance yeah, yeah no it was different yeah and then uh the taylor swift one that came out not too long ago as well that you, you see her in the back and she's on the couch and i think she i don't remember when it was uh edited or recorded but it had to have do, had to do with the, like the election maybe it was leading up to the 2020 or leading up to maybe even 2016 but it was just like she was just upset by what happened or she even tweeted something that like you know, usually like I, you know, I don't do this. You know, this isn't what I'm, what my platform's for. But I feel like I have to voice, you know, what's going on or whatever. And I was just like, yeah, it didn't have to include that. It had no relevance to what your doc or, or performance show had to do. So let, let's add some context to this J Lo debacle. Okay. All right. So the NFL supposedly was feeling the heat and the pressure for not being inclusive enough or something like that, right? Yeah. So they brought in Rock Nation, aka Jay Z, mm-hmm. to consult, right? And what they arrived at is that year Super Bowl is going to be in Miami. So they decided to split the time between Shakira mm-hmm. and Jennifer Lopez, right? So they had, to, they had to do like seven minutes each or Wait, something. What year was this? Do you remember? It was like maybe like two, maybe two and a half. I think maybe three. Okay. Because, because check this out. Mm-hmm. Here's more context. At the end, after they finished showing like, okay, she... Uh, she did a hell of a performance, got ra- raving reviews mm. for the um, the Super Bowl thing, right? Then it ends, it, it the, the end cap, the, the little last little chapter, the way they tied a bow on the whole thing is she's in D.C. and she's performing for Kamala and, um, you know, the Dems. You know, Bill Clinton's there, Obama's there. Of course, Sleepy was there taking a little nap. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Jill, she was there. Anyway, she's up there singing like, God bless him. Something. This land is my land uh-huh. or something. And then she even threw in a let's get loud. Something, something like she had to cram in one of her lyrics from one of her songs. Mm-hmm. It's like first when she went up to the podium, Marisol. First of all, Marisol is like that's one of her spirit animals. It is. J-Lo is one of her spirit it's like animals. like J-Lo and T-Pain. Uh, I don't know about T Pain. I never heard that. Two Chains. Two Chains. Yeah, bad. Two Chains. Quavo. Uh, Paula Abdul. Um, uh, who else is like a really good dancer? Her trifecta of dancers is like J Lo, Paul Abdul, and who else is known for dancing? Mm, I can't remember. It's really about it. Paul Abdul. No, there's another person. I can't remember. Madonna. No, 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 no. no. Fuck no. <laughs> Fuck no. Madonna ain't known for dancing like that. <laughs> Hell no. Not like on Paul Abdul's level. But yeah. anyway. Oof, Paul Abdul. Yeah. Um. Oh, so when she walked up to the podium in D.C., right? Uh, she, she, Mighty Soul was like, no, she's not going to, they did not let her sing the national anthem. She's not going to sing the freaking national anthem. And then she's like, this land is my land. They let her do the third grade <laughs> choir part. And then she's like, oh, because she's like, you know, Whitney Houston killed that national anthem. That would have been an embarrassment. Yeah. You can't compare that to Whitney's. No. Mm-mm. Or any, honestly. If it's J-Lo, like, yeah, don't no, do it. No, no, no. No, no. Mm-mm. So, I mean, what did my soul say about it? She was just very let down and disappointed. She's like, man, I can't believe she's that misinformed. Uh, you know, why they got to make it all about Trump. When, and, you know, it's like, y'all are the ones dividing. Y'all are the ones always playing victim. You know what I'm saying? Like, And, and Marisol even says, she, she quoted Candace Owens. She's like, we need to stop making everything about like, well, I'm the first Latina this and as a brown person. You know, that's like if I go around always saying like, as a Latino comedian, it's like, <laughs> no, motherfucker, that's so lame. Like yeah. you're limiting yourself. That means you can't perform in front of white folk, black folk, like Asians. Like, what do you mean? Like, that means you can never go on Rogan because you're not mainstream or you don't like your jokes aren't in English. Like what is as a brown person of color? Yeah, uh, it's like. Stop all it's like we're American, bro. Like we all contribute. We're all artists. Like you're you're a grown woman, you're a grown man. Uh 
just do your best, do your shit, represent, create the art you want to create. And stop always prefacing everything is like, you know. Yeah, it's hard. It, I have this conversation with people all the time because I've never been, and you and I bought, talked about the exact same thing you just said, is like cloaking everything in this identity, you know, and it's, it's hard for, for some people to get it when you talk about like, or when, I, when they mention like, well, isn't Jingle Bling Mr. Like, yes, 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 yes. But you got to understand in the context of like the current and like the last two years of conversations, conversations with either just us or with guests or with like mm-hmm. literally the community of like, politically involved fans yeah this people. is before the summer of love like i was mr they can't deport us all before you had i mean i'm not saying like the only reason i'm like looking at the border different is because now it's like whoa it's a whole lot of pakistani indian this that every other country like a hundred and gazillion every country in the world yeah you know it ain't even mexicans it ain't really just because of that it's like oh shit you start to see like hey this is unchecked yeah. like we now you see the footage from like uh, Jorge Ventura and, and different people where it's like, and here's 400 migrants just waltzing in. You know, nobody's checking them. Nobody. We just had him on about a week or so ago, and he was there last night uh, over the weekend, over Father's Day weekend, and nonstop, dude. Whether it's 9 p.m., 1 a.m., yeah, Yuma, 5 a.m., nonstop. Yeah, there's just a big old gap and nobody there, and half of them are the type to just turn themselves in because they know they're gonna get hooked up and just let in or whatever. The other half are the gotaways that don't want to get caught. They don't want to turn themselves in. But, you know, I don't think J-Lo knows all that. So what do you think? What's the price tag? Here's my question to an entertainer like yourself who's been in the industry for, let's say, decades at this point. Mm-hmm. What's the price tag that would have you go up there and be that, like, uh, establishment-based? Like, mm-hmm. if they said, hey, Chingo Blaine. You're going to do the Super Bowl and you're going to do the uh, the, well, um, the White House you're, election. You're gonna, I mean, yeah, you're going to do everything. You're gonna, and and since you're a comedian, you're going to do the press, uh, the, yeah. the, what's, it, what's it called? The... Uh, press dinner the yeah White the, the, uh-huh. whatever the correspondence mm-hmm. speech and the uh, delivery we're gonna do everything we're gonna go ahead and just put a put about a 50 milli mm-hmm. 50 milli oh price yeah tag. yeah i'm gonna I'm I'm go up there and talk about the gop <laughs> shit you can give me 20 milli 20 million i'll do it yeah this in this fucking economy give me two milli and look i'm in it i'm energized now oh, turn, turn my head turn my headphones okay you got it you got it you got it turn right my here. headphones boom, on boom, check, boom, check 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 yeah yeah, yeah. Dale, dale. people on the discord that's like, a problem people on the discord like man we was we could hear the echo from here why is headphones so loud <laughs> boy y'all be roasting me on that goddamn discord if you want to join the discord uh the the lowest tier is a dollar it is all it takes is a dollar. If bro. you just want to be a part of the community and, and you know talk shit, learn some stuff, join one of the channels. They're all open. At first, it was just going to be the general chat, but you can hop into TI history, yeah. you can t- hop into investing, whatever. RPT questions, gaming. Yup, every survival. Survival is a big one. DIY. Yeah, yeah. And for a dollar, factor in inflation, that's really forty cents. That's what you're really paying. As a matter of fact, if you really <laughs> think about it, we're paying you to join our Discord. Pretty much with yeah. content and fire ass information. Yeah, bro. Yeah, we're, we're really just whoring ourselves out at this point. No, for we're sure. We're just prostituting ourselves yeah. at this point. All that's left is making a, an Only Nails fan. Only Nails? Yeah. Nails? Yeah. Like fingernails? Or whatever other nails you might want to show people. I don't get it. Tell nails. Oh, show my nail. Okay. Yeah, it's all good, bro. If you go to my jujitsu class, you can see my nail. <laughs> you can roll with my nail. Boy, I killed it yesterday, boy. Oh, yeah. How's it going? Great. Excellent. How bro. many times have you been since you I mean, I just got there? back, so yesterday. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. I went one time. No, but you've been to the gym more than that since you moved over there, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So you've been to a few classes. Yeah, but some of them weren't jujitsu. Oh, okay. They okay. offer a variety class. That's what's up. How'd you feel last night? Um, Yesterday in the daytime. Okay, yeah, yesterday. Yeah, I went in the morning yesterday, and um, it's very hot and humid, very muggy, so I had to, like, still, still to warm up is still too much. Yeah. Because it's just, like, three minutes of jumping jacks, like, three minutes of uh, Hindu... Uh, Push-ups? Yeah, Hindu fucking push-ups. Yeah, and like, now we're doing non-stop squats. This is after fucking jogging around inside the, the ring, outside the, the, the mats. Yeah. Uh, high knees. You know, go around two times, high knees. And like, now you're doing these motherfucking squats, you know, you know, the, the, the weird kind where like when you go down, you're kind of on your tippy toes and then like your posture's super good. I don't yeah. know if it makes sense. I think those are also Hindu squats. They might be a Hindu squat. Yeah, yeah, yeah it might. I don't know. I think it is. Uh, like some penitentiary type shit, bro. <laughs> and uh, I was just lacking. Like I would do, I would do jumping jacks, but then it's like, okay, I'm not, I'm not gonna clap all the way. I'm gonna just do these little bird flaps. And then I would throw in like a couple, like a little knee, just to like catch my breath. Like I'm just, I'm gonna do a kick in between. You know, I threw in my own little. <laughs> I broke it up on my own. Start doing the cha cha slide. But sure. check, but check this out, bro. And we'll get back to politics uh, shortly. But um. Everybody's like, man, good to see you back, man. See, see, I'm putting in that mat, mat time, big dog. And um, 
you know, it's no gi. So you don't know who's a black belt, who's a white belt with no stripes. And uh, at the end, instead of rolling, instead of rolling, it was like they put three upper belts, like they just sit there, and then everybody else line up against the wall, right? Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, first three people up against the wall, y'all got to go uh, past their guard, mm-hmm. basically. Mm-hmm. You know, past their guard, they're going to try to sweep you, and I don't, I don't know what else, maybe submit, maybe, but they're just trying to sweep, sweep you. So whoever wins stays, mm-hmm. right? So... So when I'd go and try to like get past her guard and like, okay, oh, you got me. All right, you swept me, whatever. I bet I'm going to go get some water. <laughs> I'm going to walk back, get in the back of the line. At this point, the, te- the strategy is just tire them out. So like now it's just my turn again. I'm like, hey, I'm like we're going to get y'all tired. I'm trying to go around. I'm trying to juke around their, their feet. And then eventually I was the king of the hill, big dot. Oh, how many times did it take? Um, I remember like three or four. Okay. And uh, next thing you know, I'm the king of the hill, big dog. How many times? How, how long were you king of the uh, hill? Probably about three people. Wow. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, uh, shit. I'm starting to think like, bro, I probably could have, I probably could have, um, maybe not made the wrestling team, but they probably could have trained me, like in high school or something. They yeah. probably could have trained. I was very sickly though in high school, so I probably wouldn't have worked. Yeah, it was probably it was. It wasn't until what it thirty when you had the the I think tonsil. I'm, I might have been about thirty. I think mm-hmm. at at thirty. For those that haven't heard the story, when you had the tonsils removed at thirty. Did you feel like that? You just oh, yeah. you started going to the moon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because now you're able to like um, uh, maybe even uh, absorb nutrition. Mm. You know, you're not on antibiotics all the time, which tears up your stomach. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, so yeah. You know what I'm saying? Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Maybe you'll be a blue belt before you know. I mean, before this time next year, man. I, I, man, this one dude was um, he was king of the hill for a long ass time. He was doing a, all types of shit, like you know the fucking what do you call that when they like roll going inverted? Yeah, yeah. He was doing all that, and I'm like, bro, what belt are you? He's like, I'm purple. Oh, okay. I was like, word, okay. Ain't trained for a long time. But yeah, we we did the uh, Darce choke and Anaconda choke. Nice. Mm-hmm. All and, uh, all no gi. All no gi, big dot. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, bro, it, it's it's. We'll talk about it on another episode, but uh, who knows, man? Uh, we do want to put out more shows. Yeah, we don't only just think about politics all day. Uh, so yeah, y'all, we appreciate the love. Um, we, um, Marisol and I, are gonna start doing cafecito time again. Mm-hmm. There's a little nook in our bedroom where I'm gonna set up. I'm gonna test it out and just see if we're gonna like set something up. We could put like an iPad and, a, and an iPhone and and just go <clears> live to we don't know where YouTube, Facebook. I don't know. We do have a guest coming on later this episode, so we're gonna record for like another 15, 20 minutes and then hop into the guest. So maybe we can just continue shooting the shit and get back to the politics after. But mm-hmm. within that same uh, to piggyback off of that, um, cafecito time. Oh, we need to come up with a like a legitimate name. Whatever we're gonna name this new spot. Like we're go- we're migrating okay. from here to there. Uh-huh. So. Shouting out to the Discord to give us real suggestions for the names. Is it going to be RPT Studios? Is it going to be CB Studios? Like, what's it going to be? Have you thought about it much? Not really. No? Nah. Mm-mm. It's just a lot. It's just, uh, like, part of me is, like, setting a dead, deadline on my own. Like, dog, you got to think of this shit now. It's got to be tight. It's got to be perfect. And don't forget, like, Her Lounge Podcast is going to be in there, too. And, yeah. And God knows what else we cook up. And um, uh, I was with uh, Juan Perez all weekend. He's got a lot of ideas because, you know, he's... He's very familiar. He's a podcast fan. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, of course, we want to make sure we monetize because I'm not monetized on Facebook. Yeah. I, you know, my reach on there is 3.1 million, 3.4 million, the reach. Yeah. But I'm not monetized. Uh, so, yeah. So we already thinking like, OK, the set has to be set up in a way where, you know, a sponsor might be like, hey, I want product placement. I want this. I want to have my product on the shelf or something. So I told you before we start recording, I was, I was chatting with Manny yesterday and we're going to chat again tomorrow. I had an idea for to, to continue adding to the catalog of the RPT Studios. He knows so much about finance and mm-hmm. banking and real estate and all that kind of jazz that instead of just doing another show where I interviewed interviewed random people, him and I started talking about like how you know, you you always send me uh, EYL stuff, the Earn Your Leisure guys. Mm-hmm. I remember telling you, you used to listen to them way before they, they blew up. And they blew up within like two years or less, all about just finance and investing and economic, you know, conversations for the hood, for the black folk, right? Mm-hmm. And sure, other people listen to it, but that was their main thing. Like they wanted to give back to their community. I think they're both from Brooklyn or both from New York somewhere. I think from Philly. From Philly? Okay. Mm-hmm. I guess they might be based out of New York now. But either way, uh, I was like, well, I kind of want to replicate that for this why, community. Why I got to be Brooklyn, bro? I thought one of them, because one of them sounds like Jay-Z for starters. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. I think Rashad or, or one of them sounds like like Jay Z. Regardless, mm-hmm. um, I told Manny I was like I want to you know do a similar thing, or like a value tainment like Patrick but David kind of thing. And uh, he was he got really stoked about it. He's like I could have a lot of people on that started as like toilet cleaners and now like all they do is, you know, work for Chase or they work for these institutions that help you know people build a better life or whatever. So long story short, I think I'm gonna go with the name uh, major- the majority minority. I caught him. All right, and the reason is because. Sol and I were talking about this yesterday. Like a lot of the people that listen to the podcast, they look like us. They have, you know, experiences like us. They, yeah. they have family that came from where our families came from. Marginalized, oppressed people of color. Basically, but they don't see it that way, right? They see of it, not. They see it like I, I am here. I have the opportunities. I'm gonna make the best of those opportunities. Now, mm-hmm. if they had a little bit more knowledge in those arenas, they probably would, you know, they'd go further and, and faster or whatever. So we're gonna work on that. And it might be another thing that, uh, you know, that gets also backing from the same institutions that want to back RPT. For sure. You know Let's saying? get it. Yeah. So what are we talking about, Big Don? Your boy went for a stroll. Oh, man. Joseph Raheem Breezy. Joseph Raheem Breezy. I posted it with a caption, something along the lines of um, his handlers are trying to do him dirty. That's how I saw it. When mm-hmm. I saw, First of all, when I see that old man, this almost uh, 80, yeah, two, three-year-old man on a bike, Mm-mm. not good. They should have never put him on that bike. No. How do you think the day started when they were like, okay, Mr. President, today you're going to start with a nice bike ride. Well, keep in mind, uh, you know, he's the face, he's the puppet, right? Yeah. And um, it seems like that whole little, uh, I don't want to say cabinet, right? But like the people all around, the main face people, like the ones that want to make sure that everything is about optics. It's almost like a little PR content creation team where they're like, they right. the White House is a content house? Basically, right? Because the real people that are really pulling the strings and, and really making shit happen, they're they're like behind the scenes, right? You got Barry, probably Hillary. And, For sure. Uh, or whoever else, right? All them same little people. Uh, uh, you know, uh, was it Chuck Schumer or the other guy, Shifty Shift? All them little fucking, the little swamp. Yeah. They, you know, uh, or who else? The globalists, the uniparty, some of the rhinos is over there helping out. But think about it, man. This whole, this regime, every time you look up, they're doing their little Zoom calls and their press thing from that staged fake theater thing, right? You yeah. know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. That little that little set that they built. Yeah, they're always in the set. Uh, they always he always gets uh, shuffled off, doesn't answer questions a lot of times for the press. Um, porque la caga, and then. It's just always about like, oh, we're going to take him out to get chocolate, chocolate chip just so he could be relatable and shit. And, if, <laughs> and what does he do? He wants to talk to the kids. Chocolate, chocolate and then chip. as soon as he got up from the bike and shit, he went straight to a little kid. Talk to the little kid. He did? Yeah. I didn't see the full video. I just saw oh, the one where he fell. On. Yeah, dog. He went straight to the little kid. Hey, 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 hey. Like he literally like just got up. And then went straight to the little kid. Hey, 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 I'll give you my word as a Biden. So everybody saw him fall, right? Everybody saw him fall. But did you see the video, I guess, the next day? Which one? The memes? No, no, no. Here, I'll pull the it one up of Trump you. throwing his MAGA hat. <laughs> no, dude. No, this one. Where I think they're asking him about it. Jesus Christ, there's so many wires over here. Let's see. Mr. President, how are you feeling? How are you feeling, sir? Good. There you go. <laughs> oh, my God. There's a little bunny hop for the audience there. What did Jill say, Mr. President? Mr. President. Trash, bro. Who's Mr. cheering? President, I was going to say. Feeling? So let's watch it again here for how people are you who didn't feeling, get to catch it the first time. A little bunny hop. There you go. <laughs> this, this little crowd of people over here is who I'm actually a little bit more concerned about. Probably got paid to be there. Basically. Those are my thoughts. Like, what kind of stand-ins are these? Extras yeah, from he, shows? You know he ain't really want to go to church. This old perverted ass, sleepy ass. Come on, bro. He was like, oh, I got to go do this. Appearance. It's, all, it's always photo ops. Everything they accuse Trump of. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is just like a little content house. It's like, all right, he's going to be on vacation. We have to make sure we uh, get some people to interview him on the beach. He's going to be wearing a hat that says uh, the Bo Biden Foundation embroidered on the side. You know what I'm saying? Uh, let, let, we'll have him do a bike ride just to show he's agile. Bad idea, bro. Like, it just makes us look weak as a country. Like, you know, you don't think Russia, North yeah. Korea, who, Japan, whoever, they're all just like, you know, Iran, the Saudis, China, they're all like, are you watching this? <laughs> Look at this. All the countries. And who is going to pay for this? Where's that from? That's from, uh, uh, that's Nigeria. Okay, okay. Just making yeah. sure. That's, a, like, uh, that's uh, not Saudi. Yeah, no. That's uh, Godfrey. Godfrey. He got a joke like that. Dude, um, 
I, I don't know. When I first saw the video, I thought somebody had Photoshopped. I didn't think it was actually him. So I had to watch it a few times, and then I caught a, a couple of different angles. Sure enough, it was him. And I thought to who myself, that? who approved it? Why y'all let him on the bike? Like, it's so dangerous. Just like from a human, yeah. like human He's standpoint. Elderly. Yes. Like if he breaks anything. It's just risky. Like, like risky. you know, Trompitas, he's smart enough. Because I, I think there's an old clip of Trompitas talking about, I think John Kerry or something. He said, you'll never see me riding a bike in the middle of a major negotiation. Oh, really? Yeah, you could probably uh, YouTube it. Well, there was a clip that I thought was from also just like yesterday day before where, where Trump says, and I, I vow that I'll never ride a bike. Did you see Trump say that? I, I saw him say, well, he took a nasty spill, you know, you know, uh, something like, we'll pray for him in that regard. But another note, Sleepy's doing a <laughs> terrible job. <laughs> I think it might have been that same one, dude, because right after that, he's like, he, he says something really funny, and then he's like, little claps and stuff, and he's like, and I vow to you that I'll never ride a bicycle. It's like, it's like y'all need to come up with better content creation. Like, I'm sure Obama was like, I knew this was a bad idea. You know what I'm saying? Like, whoever's... Why does it seem like everything he does ends up in a catastrophe? Not just the economy and the country, but everything, every little thing that he tries to do turns into a complete calamity. Well, for one, they're illegitimate. Um, well, yes, it looks like they, they purposely trying to destroy the country. We can't always just chuck it up to um, incompetence. <laughs> you know that's true. Though people will say, uh, I forgot the the adage, but for what for don't apply malice for what you can apply stupidity. And I think a lot of this just is. I mean, you want to think it's just stupidity and incompetence, but it <clears> kind <throat> of it seems very malice. Yeah, no, I think a lot of this, a lot of this they doing it on on purpose, like. Uh, trying to make the diesel gas super expensive. I mean, trying to make us... Because listen, a starving citizenry, like a disarmed citizenry... I don't even know that's the right fucking word, but like um, a, a broke citizen is an obedient citizen. Yeah. They want to just beat you down to the point where like you have no choice but to depend on them. Yeah, a disarmed society. Yeah, I, you ha they want to make it to the point where you have no choice but to depend on them and do what they say is just like the record business. It's the exact same thing as a record business. If you're self-sufficient, self-reliant uh, artist, musician, where you're able to self-distribute, you're able to press up your copies, you have distribution, you can like get them in the record stores, you can put it up on iTunes, you can monetize, you know what I'm saying? Then you have less need for the record label system. Right. And But if they can lure you in and keep you... Uh, um, dependent, right? Because that's why I was independent. And a lot of the artists that, um, a lot of my favorite artists were independent, mm -hmm. right? But once you get lured into that system, now they want to kind of just get you to the point where you're uh, you're dependent and you're pretty much broke and hungry. Yeah. That way it's like, well, you know, turn in the album, bro. Or do the single that we told you to do. Or like work with the producer we told you to work with, you know? Yeah. Uh, you're going to sample the records we're telling you to sample. You're going to release when we say, like, this is the artwork. And if you push back too much, now you're going to be labeled difficult to work with. And, um, you know. Uh, there, I don't know why that just reminded me. There was another clip from yesterday or maybe later in that day after he did that bunny hop where they asked him about <laughs> gas prices. And, There's and a song that. called The Bunny Hop, by the way. But go on. The old school, right? When we were kids, that one? Or no? uh, you might have been a kid. I was in a club. <laughs> it's not the same No, it's like, a, it's like a club song. Oh, okay. Yeah. Maybe you can demonstrate later for the audience. Yeah, I don't know how to do it. Money Soul does it. <laughs> um, so they asked him about uh, oil, uh, oil prices or, or gas prices or something like that or the refining processes and all this shit. And... I don't know if you saw it, and he was just like, he's supposed to, apparently, I think his administration, not him, but his administration is going to, they're going to have a meeting with all the, the leading CEOs of the big oil and gas oh. companies, right? And the reporter's asking him, and I didn't pull this up because I just totally forgot, honestly, but um, they asked him, so, you know, what's the deal with why the price so high and this, that, and the other? And, <laughs> and he's just like, they're, they're, just, they're not refining. Listen to me. They're not refining oil. They can. They just won't, right? And he's going on this like weird spiel where he does that whole whisper <laughs> thing. And he's like, they're giving some excuse that they're scared that in five years they're not going to be needed and there's going to be alternative fuel sources. So that, and if you just kind of listen to what he's saying, like, yeah, a lot of people aren't investing millions, about billions of dollars into infrastructure for oil or natural or whatever, because it's all like green and go green and oil or rather in the sun and wind mm -hmm. and uh, solar. And, they're being de-incentivized. And the yes. messaging was put out even from the debates where he's like, we're going to end fossil fuels. Listen to me. Look at my, he, he walked over to the young person. I give you my word as a Biden. Look at me. We're going to end yeah. fossil fuels. <laughs> and now you have, uh, I guess Europe 
going back to coal because of Putin and, and whatever. I started reading about that this morning, but I was like, okay, they're supposedly all about going green, right? And now it's like, well, we got to do what we got to do for the people. Here's what you got to Google, bro. Did you hear about the, um, I think, uh, some type of petroleum company, LF or something, where it had a, like a fire or an explosion or some sort, right? And you would think like, oh, no. This is going to possibly make our supply go down and make our price go up. Instead, our price is going to go down a little bit due to that one plant. It was a natural gas Mm -hmm. due to that natural gas plant uh, exploding or or something like that and shutting down. Why is that? Because that particular uh, plant was exporting. Basically, we're sending a bunch of natural gas to Europe because we were trying to let them know. Like, hey, man, you don't have to depend on Russia, bro. Like, we got it. You know, we, we it's, it's like fucking Pennsylvania full of it. We got a shit ton of natural gas. We got you. And now that we're not able to send it to them, it's bringing our price down. So basically, newsflash, there's so many things ignored in terms of like, hey, there's, there's so many factors that's making the price go up for us, including the taxes, right? That's why they're considering the... Uh, tax relief oh that's what it was tax holiday it was like yeah it was like the 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 gas tax was the main topic of that conversation of which conversation uh asking biden if he's gonna lift the gas tax and it's like 18 i think it will equate to like 18 cents yeah and they were like it down to about what four dollars without that's what they said when gas was a dollar 99 all right 18 cents makes a big deal when it's uh five and some change it's a spit in the face of the american yeah you're not even gonna be like oh my god everybody let's go fucking fuel up and fill everything yeah it's like why why bro were you still paying five bucks more i think by the end of mid to end summer, they're projecting a seven dollar national average. By the end Can of you se- September, summer. By the end of summer, yeah. Can seven dollar national average. Yeah, I mean, damn. Uh, there was once an orange man who predicted all that. Not only that, dude, he predicted about a dozen things in that compilation video mm-hmm. that people have made. Oh, man, all of them, such a good compilation. All of them have pretty much come to fruition. But were you talking about the one here in, in Texas in Freeport, the explosion? Uh, is it called like LF LNG L- LNG LNG? LNG. Yeah, Freeport LNG is huge. Yeah, just an hour from here. Okay, then yeah. that's what it was. Then. So it'll be offline for three weeks. And um, is it natural gas? Following a fire at the experts. Uh, yeah, an explosion at a liquefied natural gas terminal in Texas left uh, nearby residents rattled, uh, and it's taking a substantial amount of fuel off the market at a time when global demand is soaring. And supposedly, if I'm not mistaken... I don't know hear about this. If I'm not mistaken, it's going to make the domestic price of natural gas go down a little bit. So, mm. it's, so it's one of those where it's like, wait, so how is it that... Uh, is it a refinery? What is it? What is that considered? Uh, I guess it would be right. Or processing plant, whatever. Right. Mm-hmm. This fucking plant explodes, shuts down, but somehow our price is going to go down. Hmm. That just lets you know it's just a wake up call. It's like, wait, all the stuff that we're doing, we're like, wait, we're shipping a bunch of natural gas to Europe. Like right now, y'all y'all need to be doing everything it takes to to ease the pain at the pump for the American people. Damn. Interesting. Yeah, I have to read about this later. But yeah, that's kind of where we are here. This is 2022. This is June 2022 for everybody. For everybody in the future tuning in, like, what was this fucking Chingo and Rob guy talking about? Shit. Facts. Yeah. Fire. <laughs> I said some shit on stage over the weekend where I, was, where I think it might have been that thing about the genders where I'm like, I'm like, these are just facts. And I was like, I need to have a fax machine up here with all these goddamn facts. <laughs> Speaking of facts, though, we didn't, because uh, this happened after we recorded the last, Myra run her, won her seat. The day after we released our last episode last week, uh, she won her seat. I congrats. congrats to her, Meyer for Congress, 34th district in the RGV. And a bunch of people sent, you know, were sending me the posts and the pictures. And she was on all the headlines. I think she was on Fox that, that day, of course. Ladworth Crowder used her thumbnail as the main thumbnail for their show. It was everywhere. Everybody yeah, talked about Hannity, it. Hannity, right? uh, Tucker. Everyone talked about it. And then Elon tweeted out, mm-hmm. you know, first time I voted for Republican was for Myra. So then I, 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 I posted on my Instagram. I was like, let it be known that she did RPT before Elon endorsed her. All right. Mm, you know what I'm saying? Coincidence. Just I, I don't know if saying. Elon got pushed over the edge and Elon was like indecisive until he heard RPT. Yeah, basically, basically. Um, and that's, it's big for the he's, RGV. He's a, very, he's a very smart man, bro. He's an interesting guy, right? He's very smart. He listens to RPT. I bet he does. Mm-hmm. I bet he started listening to, because, you know, he might be listening to Tim Cast. He might do Tim Cast in the future. Yeah. He's working on rockets while listening to us. Yeah, can you imagine? Yeah. You're talking about the record business and politics, and he's, like, building on SpaceX. Like, 
rockets. Yeah. What if he was out there actually just welding on his rockets and shit? Just represent for African Americans, bro. DeSantis, did you hear him? Yeah. <laughs> I love support for my African Americans. <laughs> I wouldn't be mad if that guy would took a stab at it this year. Or twenty twenty four rather. Uh um, DeSantis. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. You know? That's really who Trump need to really be worried about. Facts. Uh the best the best way you could kind of think about that when it comes to DeSantis is that he's so I and I've been saying this for a hot ass minute. Um nobody seems to disagree. He's more palatable, right? He, whatever he says is a little more easy to digest than when Trump's up there telling you whatever he's telling yeah, you. Yeah, Trump had to come in like a wrecking ball. Which I also liked. Yeah. So I'm kind of that's how he had to come he had to shake up the establishment. Yeah. So when people like Rogan included, uh Tim Kennedy was on there recently. Great episode. If you haven't heard it, it's fantastic. Coleon Noir was on there recently. And Tim was like, he considers himself a extreme moderate. Like he he really I mean, he you're talking about a Green Beret, like a guy who was in Afghanistan recently. He tells the stories of, of the, the evacuation, the debacle. So disturbing the like mm. what he had to go through to get saves a lot of these people and still leave thousands of people behind. I think they're still Americans. Yeah, uh, they're still there, behind yeah. enemy lines. And um, yeah, Afghanistan's worse off now. I think uh, who's that? The Taliban. Mm -hmm. They're they're in charge yeah. now. Yeah. It? So he told. I mean, you guys got if you haven't listened to the Tim Kennedy episode, it's the most recent JRE. It's so good. But uh, he was talking about he had dinner with Tulsi for like three hours, right? And they they disagree on a lot of things. They were both in New York on a media press tour kind of thing. And uh, Joe just asked, like, well, what, what do y'all disagree on? He said, one of the main things is, like, uh, geopolitics, right? Mm. And, like, where we should be, where we shouldn't be, and all this uh -huh. kind of stuff. And then he goes into talking about that. But Rogan <laughs> will always say that, like, Trump was such a polarizing figure, which he was. Mm -hmm. And he would say, like, you know, a president shouldn't talk that way. So when I hear him or anybody say that kind of stuff, and there's tons of people on the, on the left or liberals that will say that, what is a president supposed to talk like? Do we want Obama in there, this charismatic, this supposed charismatic leader who was super disingenuous? Or do we want Trump who was giving it to you straight and how, in my opinion, I feel like more Americans receive things, right? They're more, they're more likely to not just believe, but at least think to themselves, like, if I vote for this guy, he gets where I'm coming from, right? I'm just, yeah. just saying, I don't know. I mean, I think... It's one thing to be like a president shouldn't talk like that. It's another thing to be like the media shouldn't misinterpret everything the president says. That's a very good point. And constantly try to frame him as a damn racist or whatever. Fill in the blank. Um, have you heard of this James Klug guy? Oh yeah, yeah. He does the man on the street stuff. Yeah. Did you see the one uh, where he was out there in California? Okay, Jesse's asking for a link. Oh, okay. He's yeah. Like, it's in fifteen minutes, right? Can you send the link? Yeah, yeah. Say. I'll let him know. Um, Tell us. Sorry. So, yeah, we'll send it uh, right at 11. Yes. Okay. Uh, so this James Clue guy, he did one. Did they post that in the um, in the Discord? The, the one you're talking about? Oh, where it was, it was Trump's birthday. Yeah. No, uh, I, didn't, I mean, I didn't see it. Dude, it is really good. Really good because um, y'all need to check it out. Uh, there, was, there was this black dude out there from Compton. And he was like, oh, yeah, Trump all the way. He even had like a Trump coin. He had like the, pulled out this coin. I got and, one of those. And he word. And I think I have one around here. I got a, a Trump dollar, a million dollar bill in my <laughs> wallet. But um, but basically he broke it down. Like like even even when there was like a liberal ass comp couple, because his question was uh, today's Donald Trump's birthday. Do you have a message for Donald Trump? And a, a lot of people like, oh, happy birthday. Uh, we miss you. Please come back. Like, man, we need you right now. And you're, you're a great president, stuff like that. A lot of people are saying that. And every once in a while, every once in a while, they'd be like, you have a message for Donald Trump. They're like, fuck off, fuck off and die. He needs to fucking <laughs> never come back. He needs to be in an orange jumpsuit and like, fuck off and, and the, die. yeah, and the ladies and just, you know, uh, liberals that only watch liberal media and they believe it all so they're just like he needs to be in an orange jumpsuit for he ruined the country and it's like well, what would he do wrong everything everything he touched and um he's uh, and then uh there was like a white couple saying all this stuff and then the young black guy went and basically jumped in their scene back again with james klug and he, he damn near grabbed the mic uh because they were saying he incited a seditious insurrection and he called them to go she they said we're all gonna go down to the capitol and we're gonna fight like hell and he and then he jumped in he's like oh are you talking to the part about the part where he says 
uh, we need to fight like hell to save our country. And then he says the same quote that has also been said by Bernie Sanders. He started listing people, Bernie Sanders, Hillary, boom, boom, boom. He's like, a lot of people on the left have said the same thing, and nobody misinterpreted that as yeah. as run up in the Capitol or whatever. And they were just like, you're a Trump supporter. He's like, yeah, and I'm from Compton. And da 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 He pulled out his Trump coin. <laughs> it was amazing. It's uh, it, it really is legacy media's fault. I mean, any way you cut it, like this is the fault of whoever pulls the strings for what you see on TV and for what you hear a lot of what's on the radio. Like, yeah, they got J-Lo. <laughs> they got everybody, for the most part, mm-hmm. man. Like, uh, after, after we get our guest on and on the next episode, we'll talk about Buzz Lightyear and all these different <laughs> things and with Tim Allen and whatnot. Yeah, lots to talk about. Uh, Sav Sav says got banned off Twitter for the third time. Yeah, she's actually in, in at the border. I don't know if she's in Yuma or here in Texas doing the Lord's work. Yeah, sorry there. Uh, she posted something last night. Really doing like the media's job. Yeah, like, just showing like all her interviews. That's why they kicked her off. That's why they don't want her on there. You got Jorge Ventura and Savannah Hernandez, two, you know, Hispanic Americans down there doing the media's duty at the border. Yeah. That's the world we're living in. Right a now. lot of the media's duty, like showing a lot of stuff, showing like what, you know, black folk are really think when they're at the gas station and what they really feel about the economy and um, she covered, oh, she went to like some pride parade stuff and interviewed people about like how they identify their pronouns or genders. And then, you know, the left didn't like that either. They don't want you holding up a mirror. Dude, those people are, I mean, I hate to play, paint with these broad brushes and I'm going to stop saying that because it's, just, you know, where I come from, you know, what side, uh, you know, how I feel about all these things regardless, but they are completely for the most part insane, like 95, 97% mm-hmm. insane. Cause you ask them a question and they come, they like the example you gave, like they will attack anybody and attack anybody asking the question. And especially if you agree or rather disagree with them, they're like, oh, you fucking bigot, fascist, Nazi, whatever, fill in the blank. Mm-hmm. Right. Meanwhile, most moderate moderate right conservative and all the other ones on the on on the opposite side of them will just be like i disagree with you and this is why right let me tell you why we'll have a conversation about it but everyone else is just like no i'm gonna fucking i'm gonna take you out yeah you need to be canceled yeah y'all couldn't cancel me not today no. me la pelaron, pero bien peladita. we'll be right back we'll probably start this episode with our guest actually okay bit all right we'll see you in a bit Sus.